God loves to use weak people. It's one of those things in the Bible that God's ways are the opposite of human ways. Humans are all about arrogance, about power, about positioning yourself, whereas God's ways are about humility and service and hum humbling yourself under his mighty hand and being humble before people. A and the world can't understand it, but God loves to use weak people. And I want to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12 this morning. It's just such a wonderful passage. As Paul faced his own weaknesses and was confronted by them and even given extra weaknesses by God, and everyone has weaknesses, he learned some powerful things about being a servant of God and about what God is in the business of. Let's have a look. We're in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and uh, I'll pick it up from verse 1. He's been talking about boasting and the fact that uh, false teachers like to boast about uh, all their experiences and how wonderful they are. But he says, boasting is necessary. It is not profitable, but I'll move on to visions and revelations from the Lord. I know a man in Christ who was caught up to the third heaven 14 years ago. Whenever he was in the body or out of the body, I don't know. God knows. I know that this man, whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know, but God knows was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words which a human being is not allowed to speak. I'll boast about this person, but not about myself, except of my weaknesses. For if I want to boast, I wouldn't be a fool because I'd be telling the truth. But I will share, spare you so that no one can credit me with something beyond what he sees in me or hears from me, especially because of the extraordinary revelations. Therefore, so that I will not exalt myself, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to torment me, so that I would not exalt myself. Concerning this, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it would leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is perfected in weakness. Therefore, I will most gladly boast all the more about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may reside in me. So I take pleasure in weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and in difficulties for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Now, we're not told what the thorn in the flesh was that came to Paul, and people have speculated about all kinds of things, about relational issues, uh, difficult people in his life, whether it was some disability that he had or a lisp or something. Uh, you can't know, and it doesn't really matter. Uh, what matters is that God gave it to him, and it was really important in order to keep him humble and to teach him these important lessons that God's power is made perfect in weakness. He gives grace to the humble, and so we can even boast in our weaknesses. It seems strange to do, to want to boast in your weakness and say, I haven't got it all, mate. I've, I've got all these problems and issues. I, I'm not good at everything like I want people to think I am. Normally, that's what the world would say. Hide your weaknesses. Pretend they don't exist. Maybe even uh, pretend to yourself they don't exist. All of us have weaknesses. Uh, they might be in our skill set, they might be physical, they might be emotional, they might be uh, in the area of temptation, they might be spiritual, they might be intellectual weaknesses. Many of us face circumstances that are very, very difficult and we, we are weak because of it. Might be financially weak because of situations we're in. Maybe there's a whole lot of difficult relationships in our life that are our weakness at the moment or ongoing. Uh, maybe part of our background and the way that we relate is because of other relationships. All those things are weaknesses uh, and often we're tempted to hide them and deny them. Uh, and, and it's a real problem. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, not we just read 2 Corinthians, but in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse, uh, verse 27, Paul talks about how God doesn't choose to use the, the most important things in the world. He doesn't call into his family the most important people. No, it's often the weak, those who are looked down on. The, you know, people are impressed by, uh, he says, Greeks' wisdom and Jews are looking for miraculous signs and omens and things, but God is interested in weakness and he doesn't choose all the intellectuals to be his people. And so he, often the people who are the most weak are the ones 
who uh, he has chosen to be part of his family. So we're all weak. We're all weak and we're all struggling. So what do we do with that? Well, there's several things to learn about our weaknesses and what to do with them so that God might use us powerfully and effectively in service. We've been talking about being servants of God, but it's okay to be weak. And so the first thing is to admit your weakness. Um, stop pretending uh, to other people that you've got it all made, right? It, it doesn't matter. And in fact, it's not going to help you in your ministry. It's not going to impress God. Uh, and uh, we're not trying to impress other people. And so stop pretending. It's okay to admit it, to admit it to ourselves and to, to face the fact that we haven't got it all together is, is an okay thing. Um, it, it, you've got to know that Jesus is Lord and know that you are only human. And so stop denying it to yourself, stop denying it to other people. Uh, and um, God, God will start to change you as he changed Paul to see that actually there's a power in it. Uh, and, and so the second thing after you've admitted is to be content in weakness. Um, it's something that's very hard to do, to be content in your weakness, uh, because uh, you're always then relying on other people uh, to make up for it, and, and, and we're particularly relying on God. Um, it's hard to learn, but it's an important lesson to learn. 2 Corinthians 9 is all about that. I mean, Paul was whiz-bang at some things, right? He was a great debater and he had this great upbringing and training as a, a Pharisee and, and, uh, and, and almost lawyer in the way that he went about his business. But he went through shipwrecks and all kinds of difficulties. He got beaten and blasted and attacked and uh, so many difficulties that he faced. And then finally, the thorn in the flesh was all there partly from God to teach him about humility and about uh, being content in weakness. And he says this, there's lots of benefits from being content in your weakness and knowing that you're weak. The first is, what does weakness do? It causes you to depend on God. The pain came from God in that passage and he pleaded with God to take it away. And that's what weakness does. It teaches us to rely on our Heavenly Father and bring our life before God. And, and even if it's, it might be to take it away, it might be to uh, make up for it with other people, can God to supply our needs. But it teaches us to depend on God. Secondly, it prevents arrogance. And that's why the thorn in the flesh was given to him, wasn't it? Uh, he says, uh, yeah, because of the great things that were happening, uh, I was given this a thorn in the flesh, the messenger saying to me, so I wouldn't exalt myself, so that I would be humbled. Uh, so that's the second benefit of weakness. The third thing is it encourages fellowship, fellowship with God and fellowship with other people. We get to work together as a team to make up for our weaknesses, but also it binds people together as they share them and as they minister to each other in them. But also the last benefit of weaknesses is it increases your capacity for sympathy for others and for ministry because all of those experiences, all of those weaknesses, uh, you're able to use to great advantage in, in talking about other people and in ministering the gospel, particularly showing that God um, loves the weak and he's, uh, he's not impressed by people who've got it all together, who are self-sufficient. And no, uh, he, and so, well, that's the third thing, isn't it? So we admit our weaknesses, be content in our weaknesses, but also be honest about our weaknesses with other people. And I think ministry partly begins with vulnerability. It's always a risk sharing stuff about yourself. Um, often when we do share stuff, it's the good stuff, the stuff that we think will impress people. But are we trying to impress them or are we trying to influence them? Are we trying to lead them to God, to Jesus Christ, to grace? Uh, in that case, well, we can be honest about our weaknesses and show the, how God has worked in them or ministered to us and cared for us. That's what he's done with the gospel. The gospel is about our weakness, isn't it? That we are sinners in the hands of an angry God under his judgment, but in his grace and kindness, he rescued us. And you can say that, but pretend to be sinless. And that's ridiculous. Uh, it, it, it belies the truth of the gospel. Um, but the same is true in all sorts of other ways. Um, 
Paul often shared his weaknesses in his letters. You read through them and you, you read about his failings, his own struggle with sin in, one, in Romans chapter 7. You, you read about his feelings of, um, you know, of, of grief and joy and pain and all sorts of other things. You read about his frustrations and you know, the things he, he, he wished were the case but weren't and that he'd been abandoned by friends uh, in, in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4 he talks about that about you know his sadnesses over Demas who loved the world and has gone off and how no one's around and stuff he's not whinging at that point he's sharing in his heart um, with Timothy uh, and we get the benefit of looking in on that wonderful ministry relationship he shares his fears, his fears for the people that he's writing to, uh, a fear that you've been led astray, his own fears about the future, and so on. He's, he's trusting God and all that, and he knows that God is in control and sovereign and working everything out. But that doesn't mean that he's not afraid of some things. And Paul was not scared to be vulnerable and to share all those things. Vulnerability is risky, but, but it's also liberating uh, and it also leads to a much more effective engagement with others. Um, it's risky because we, we fear that people might use it against us if they knew deep down what I was really like or that I'm not good at everything or that I struggle in this area. But it's liberating, liberating for you, but also liberating for other people as God uses that to show that God, the gospel is for weak people and that God is in the business of um, not, not choosing that which is self-sufficient and perfect, but that which is broken and fragile. Uh, we are clay jars. We're, we're fragile, we're scratched up, we might be chipped, uh, but that's okay. That is what God chooses to use, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 7. Uh, the last thing then is to, well, admit your weaknesses, be content in your weaknesses, be honest and honestly share your weaknesses. But the last thing is weird, and that's really is the strange thing in 2 Corinthians in our passage, is glory in your weaknesses. Paul says he boasts in these weaknesses. Not only is he not trying to hide them, he's, uh, he's yelling them to the world. And so he's told four times through the whole letter of 2 Corinthians about this great long list of struggles and troubles and weaknesses that he's had, personal, you know, and uh, the private, uh, he's, you know, he's open about a bit of that and about the, the things that have happened in his ministry life. And the, the, the super apostles say, we've got it all together, who he's writing against. Uh, and they, they would never admit weakness. They would never admit that they've been shipwrecked or beaten or bashed, but he's all for it. And he says, I've learned to glory in it. Uh, and he, isn't that the lesson? Yeah, he's pleaded three times to the Lord to take away this uh, thorn in his flesh, but he said to me, no, my grace is sufficient to you. My power is perfected in weakness. And so I will most gladly boast all the more about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may reside in me. And in the end, he says, I take pleasure in weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and difficulties for the sake of Christ, because when I'm weak, then I am strong. If you know that true strength is actually when you're weak and relying on Jesus Christ, then that really gives you incentive to boast in your weaknesses. And so uh, some self-reflection questions. Am I limiting God's power in my life and in my ministry? Uh, are you limiting it um, by hiding them, by pretending I don't have any weaknesses, I don't have any struggles? Uh, what do I need to be most honest about at the moment? Or that could I be honest about at the moment that will be mean that I'm able to help others and rely on Christ all the more? When we are weak, then we are strong. When we know the Lord Jesus Christ, because he is our strength and power, and all glory is to go to him. He's in the business of using weak vessels, clay pots, broken people, calling them into his family, giving them uh, joy and glory and power and life that they don't deserve. And we can boast in our weaknesses so let's stop hiding them from ourselves and pretending otherwise let's be open and honest with ourselves uh, let's be content in our weaknesses let's uh, be happy to share them uh, appropriately uh, and let's glory in our weaknesses because when we're weak then we're strong let's pray father we want to thank you 
for this challenge and that your ways are totally unlike the world's ways. Please remake us and rebuild our mindset and our heart that we might start delighting in things that you delight in rather than things that the world delights in. Help us never to pretend with you, with ourselves or with others that we're all that. And help us to be humble before you, to admit our weaknesses, uh, to bring them to you, to depend on you because of them, uh, and to uh, receive and give sympathy and fellowship and ministry as a result of them. Help us to delight in what you delight in, to even learn to delight and boast in our weakness. In Jesus' name, for his glory and sake. Amen. God bless everyone. Catch you for another devotion tomorrow.